bless you guys with a wonderful day today that the Lord has given us. Today we're going to continue of the book of Amos in chapter 6. Recap from the last chapter. Last chapter is continue of this chapter. But chapter 5 was talking about a call to repentance but knowing true justice and how to obtain it. How to obtain true justice um, is to give your life to Christ. And I don't want to talk, speak too much about chapter 5. If you guys haven't seen that video, you could guys could go back um, in the YouTube channel and look for that video. That video will be right before this one. So I hope you guys watch that because it was a good chapter. Knowing true justice and how to obtain it. That's what the Lord gave me to title it. So let's go on with chapter 6. But let's pray and then ask for understanding dear father God we thank you for this day and this opportunity to get to know you more to get to know you your son Jesus Christ more so we could be more Christ like followers like him Lord Jesus we ask that you know you give us the understanding of your spirit let us let the spirit dwell in us let the spirit feed us the nutrition of the word of the understanding of what we need to apply in our lives and what we need to learn from the Old Testament and the New Testament so we could grow spiritually more and more each day, Lord. We just ask that even though Jesus died on the cross for our sins, we, we don't know why it was a sad thing. And us as human beings, we don't think we would do what Jesus did because we won't. We're just human beings. We would do it in self. We would do it in a selfish way, or do it in a prideful way. Jesus did it in a humble way, and we just want to be more like your son. We want to be more Christ-like. We just ask you, Father God, that we don't know when you're coming, but we just ask that your Holy Spirit give us understanding of this word today in Amos chapter six, that it will sink into our lives, it will sink into our hearts and our minds, so we can have understanding. Let us have. Let us have un unity in the body of Christ and let us have all understanding. So we thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys once again. Let's get to reading Amos chapter 6. The word is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What sorrow await awaits you? who launch in luxury in Jerusalem, and you feel secure in Samar Sam Samaria. You are famous and popular in Israel, and people go to you for help, but go over to Klane Klan Klan and see what happened there. Then go to the great city of Hamath, and down to the Philistine city of Gath. You are no better than they were. And look at how they were destroyed. You pushed away every thought of coming disaster. But your actions only bring the day of judgment closer. How terrible for you who sprawl on ivory beds. And, la and lounge on your couches eating the meat of tender lambs from the flock and of choice cows fat, fattening in the stall. You sing tribal songs to the song of harp and fancy yourselves to be great musicians like David. You drink wine by the bowlful and perfume yourselves with fragrant lotions. You care nothing about the ruin of your nation. Therefore, you will be the first to be led away as captives. Suddenly, all your parties will end. The Sovereign Lord has sworn by His own name, and this is what He, this is what He, the Lord of, of he Heaven's army says. I despise the arrogance of Israel, and I hate their fortresses. I will give this city and everything in it to their enemies. If there are ten men left in one house, they will all die. And 
when a relative who is responsible to dispose of the dead goes into the house to carry out the bodies he will ask the last survivor is anyone else with you when the person begins to swear no by he will interrupt and say and say stop don't even mention the name of the lord when the lord gives the command homes both great and small will be smashed to pieces can horses gallop over boulders can oxen be used to plow to plow to plow them um but that but that's how foolish you are when you turn justice into poison and the sweet fruit of righteousness into bitterness and you brag about your con conquest of Lodebar you boast did we make Carnam Carn Carnam by our own strength O people of Israel, I am about to bring an enemy nation against you, says the Lord, God of heaven armies. They will oppress you throughout your land, from Lebo, Hafmoth in the north, to the Aba Valley in the south. Amen. So this chapter is talking about knowing true justice, once again, knowing true justice and how to obtain it because chapter 5 is is continue of chapter 6 chapter 6 talks about how Israel they oppressed the poor like we talked about in the beginning of the book of Amos but they were feeding on the flock it says how terrible for you who sprawl on ivory beds and lounge on your couches eating the meat of tender lambs from the flock and of choice cows fattened in the st st stall so basically, God is bringing judgment. God is saying that, you know, you guys are, um, you guys, your judgment is here and you guys has turned away from me. As we saw in the last chapter, talked about they put gods, they put other gods before, you know, the true God, the Lord of Heaven's armies. But it shows that they're no different. They being, they're basically being hypocrites. They know different. They're here doing this. It says here in the beginning. It says, What sorrow awaits you lounge in luxury in Jerusalem? And you feel secure in Sam Samaria. They feel secure. And then it says, You are famous and popular in Israel. And people go to you for help. That's like now in the church. People will go to people they like to listen to. To, to, to have help. And it shows that it doesn't work that way. We we have to be attentive to what the Spirit says. That's why if God gives you the opportunity to have discernment of the spirits, to know what what spirits are from God and what's what what what's not the Holy Spirit, then God will know. Because it says they will be famous. People will love going to those people in Israel, and that that's in the church to today. We call ourselves a church, but we're not united. We call ourselves a church. We call ourselves the bride, but we're not united. We need to be united. God is only taking one bride, not many. No matter what race you are, what language you speak, what um um what where your church is located, how many members of your church, it doesn't matter. God wants us to be united, but in a way, He wants us to not be famous because it says you are famous and popular in Israel, and people go to you for help. People will go to them for help. Just to listen to what they want to hear. Because it says here. But go over Kleine and see what happened there. Then go to the great city of Hamath. And down to the Philistine city of Gath. You are no better than they were. Israel was no better than they were. Because they they had sin. That's for us as believers. We can't say we know true justice by just knowing the court system. We can't know we, true, we know true justice and and all of this stuff we can't know and not apply we can't say we're more sinless than others because we're all we're all sinners we're all the same in god's eyes we're all the creation our duty is to obey him and repent from our sins and that's what this chapter is basically talking about again to repent because we're no better we can't say i can't say that i'm sinless than you guys because that's not true. A lie is a sin. Stealing is a sin. Killing is a sin. 
cheating on your wife or husband, girlfriend, whoever, adultery, that's what it is, is a sin. Even looking at another woman and you're not even with her is a sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short to see His glory. You know why? Because we're all sinners. That doesn't mean we have to live in sin. That doesn't mean we have to be enslaved to sin. That means we just kind of put more effort to change the, the, the areas in our life. Because we all have areas in our life. We may not be captive to sin, but we might, we might be captive to an area we need to work on. And we all had that area. I have that area that God tells me that I need to work on to be a better brother in my family, to be a better helper in my family, to be a to be better in for myself, to grow more spiritually with God. And that's what God is talking about when He says, "You know, you're you're you are better. You're you are no better than you were." Because we're not the people of the world. Yeah, the only difference. They may sin and they they will not repent. That some they will not repent. People of the world will not acknowledge God, but we acknowledge God. But we should think we're more sinless than the world because God could save those people just like He saved us when we was in the world. And that's what God is trying to teach Israel here because they thought they were so superior to their other nations. That's what Israel thought. And it says here that they basically it says you push away every. Every thought of coming disaster, they push away every thought of coming disaster. They push away of what's coming. They don't. They don't acknowledge the judgment. They don't acknowledge anything. They they just push it away. That's what they do. And it says, but your actions only bring the day of judgment closer. The actions you make bring the day of judgment closer. And that's what God will judge. He will judge everyone. He will judge his his fellow believers. Because his judgment is him disciplining us. And he will judge those that that don't know him as well. Because it says here that those people, they will push disaster away. They will push disaster. Disaster in a way. They will push conflict. They will push people away from the church, Israel. They will push prophecies. There were many prophecies that through prophets that profit what's gonna happen to Israel you know what Israel do they push it away and you know what happens in modern day in modern day America modern day world everywhere the churches the the people that call themselves their follower of Christ many among us will push away if God prophesied to them if God prophesied to them or anything that's gonna happen and if you know the consequences but you still do it but you avoid it you're just trying to avoid God, but God is going to catch up with his judgment. And for his believers, he's going to catch up with his judgment and discipline. Because God, it says here that... I read yesterday, 2 Timothy chapter... Um, 1 Timothy chapter 1, but in chapter... 1 Timothy chapter 1 and chapter 4 and chapter 6, it talks about false prophets. There will be false prophets among us. And that's... There was a many in Israel and I don't want to get off topic but it goes with this that they're avoiding the judgment they're avoiding what God says and they think it's all fine and dandy that they're living in a luxurious life then it says here you sing tribal songs to the sound of harp and fancy yourself to be great musicians like David basically they sing songs they want to dress fancy and fancy could be anything some people like to wear a suit and tie there's nothing wrong with that but it doesn't make you holier than other people. Same if I wear a, a, a plain t-shirt. It doesn't make me holier than another person. It all comes to our growth with God. Our spiritual relationship with God. But even then we're not holy than others. Because God, he works with all. He works with all. Maybe in different situations and areas in their life. But we're not holy. We're, we're, we're not holy than we think we are. Only God could put the the judgment of that only he could says okay well done okay well done what well, god could say you think you're holier but look what you're doing right here you can't say you're holier than this god doesn't want us to be like that that god wants us to to have humility and then the bible talks a lot about humility we need to be humble but the thing with the human flesh we we, we always become prideful and i have done in times too i'm guilty of it many I could say that because, hey, I used to be like that all this time, but now God is teaching me, little by little. Humble. 
humility consider others better than yourselves like that and then it says here that on six it says you drink wine and both full and perfume yourself with fragrant lotions you care uh, nothing about the ruin of your nation israel didn't care that the nation was going in ruins they just cared of what the what they had their false gods their they were they were just caring of the materialistic things they were there was a caring of what was happening to their nation because they just thought it was just gonna go by like i said earlier they, you push every thought of coming disaster they push every thought they thought everything was gonna be fine because in the book of in the book of um judges it talks about how Israel did that a lot in the book of Judges. In the book of Judges, Israel sinned and sinned again. And what did God do? He kept on forgiving them. But God gave them, God forgiven them to a certain extent where I'm going to forgive you, but I'm going to discipline you guys. I'm going to discipline my people. And I'm gonna, and those that don't know me, I'm going to put judgment upon the nation because you guys, I forgive you guys. God is saying, I forgive you guys over and over, but you guys still do the same thing. And that was a good chapter. The book of Judges, I want to I wanna gain more information, more revelation from God about it. Because I, uh, I did a Bible study on it with my other church. And it was a great Bible study. It was a great, you know, book of Judges. It, it showed me a lot. Um, but anyways, get back to Amos chapter 6. It says, Therefore, you will be first to be laid away as captives. Since they did the care about their nation, they will be laid away as captives. You know why? Because here, in the end, those towns, it says the homes, great and small, will be smashed into pieces. God will bring Israel to the enemies. My bad, I said it the wrong way. God will bring Israel's enemies to Israel. So they could learn. I protected you from your enemies. Now I'm going to allow them to destroy Israel. To destroy your homes. To, to captive you. To keep you captive. And that's what God did. God wasn't doing it because he wasn't a merciful God. He was doing it to teach them a lesson. That's his judgment. His judgment was disciplining them. Because if God doesn't discipline us, we think sin is okay. We think what we're doing is okay. What happens? God is going to allow our enemies to come forth and captive us. And that's what he did to Israel. He will allow Israel's enemies to captive them so they could learn that they need the Lord. That they don't need false gods like the sun god. Like it says in chapter 5. It says, Saku, your king, and Kawan, your star god. My guy, it was a star god, not a sun god. Basically. Then it says here, it says, O oh people, it says here about the can horses gallop over boulders or oxen used to plow them, but that's how foolish you are when you turn justice into poison. That's how foolish Israel became because um, God was using a, a, a parable in, in a sense. He was like, can horses gallop over bo boulders? No, horses can't really gallop over boulders because boulders are big. Can oxen be used to plow them? No, because oxen can't pull a big boulder. You need more than one animal, more than one person to p push a boulder or pull it away. It says, but that's how mm -hmm. foolish you are when you mm -hmm. turn justice into poison. Mm -hmm. Israel turned their justice into poison. They turned their justice system. Israel turned their justice and their nation into poison. That it basically, it, in the long run, it destroyed them. And this talks about in chapter 5, we have to know true justice. Israel's justice was poisoning. Poisoning to the people, but poisoning to themselves. Their justice they thought they had with their false gods, their star god, Kaiwan, and Sakuf, your king god. Those justice they thought they have within those graven images, those false images, they thought they had justice. But God put it right there and says, nope, that's not true justice. They thought they had justice within those false gods. No, you only have true justice 
within Christ, within Jesus Christ, within God the Father, the Holy Spirit, all three in one. You believe in those? You believe in that? You know what? That's true justice because that will bring true justice into your lives, into your household, within your own spiritual life. And that's what this chapter is mainly talking about, that they poison true justice. But our do is to accept God's justice and turn away from false justice. And it says here, to sum it up, O people of Israel, I am about to bring an enemy nation against you, says the Lord God of heaven armies. This is God talking. They will oppress you throughout your land. They will oppress them, which we've seen that a lot in the Old Testament. From Lebu, Hamath, and the north, to the Abba Valley in the south. They basically going to push Israelites out. And it shows that us, we need to know God's justice. We can't have justice through a graven image, a false God. Even through people, we can't have true justice. I can't have true justice in Christ by relying on my mom so much. Even though there's times I still rely on my mom so much, which I have to stop. I have to rely more on God. But it's okay that my, I can ask my mom for help so she can help me in my spiritual growth in Christ. It's okay if I ask another believer or a family member, those that's in Christ, it's okay to ask, but we can't rely on them so much to have true justice in our lives. And justice in the Bible mainly means justice in our spiritual lives. It's not only talking about the courts, and a lot of people miss that. They miss what God is saying because they always mention the courts. It's true. The Bible talked a lot about the courts and Israel and all of these nations, and that's justice that's God having mercy in the court system to those that's his people to those that he loves but true justice is that with yourself true justice is within the the court system and what God does with the with saving people from Israel but mainly justice is within ourselves Dying to our flesh, asking God, I want justice through you, not through a false God, to a false image, or having an idol. It could be your wife, your husband, your brother, your sister, or relying. If you rely on somebody too much, you're basically becoming, they're becoming an idol to you. If you rely on, on things, on people too much, if you help, not help people too much, but it, let's say you just do things because you do things but you got to do things of the love of God and if God allows you to you need true justice and this this chapter is talking about knowing true justice and rejecting false justice this chapter is talking about knowing and rejecting rejecting false justice this chapter we have to reject the false justice and bring the true justice to our lives to around us and through Christ and through God the Lord of heaven armies and that's all I have to say I don't really have that much for this chapter it's basically a continuing of chapter 5 of their judgment of the God of Lord of Heaven Arm is putting judgment towards Amos in the book of Amos in chapter 5. And Amos was a prophet prophesying to Israel and all of these nations. We are going to continue to Amos chapter 7 where it starts off the visions, the visions of lo locusts. There's a lot of visions and it's going to really get good. We got three more chapters left. We got 7, 8, and 9. After 9, we're done. After that, we're done. And then I'm going to ask the Lord to give me understanding of what he wants me to read next. I really want to read Obadiah next because it talks about Edom. That was an Edom and it's very short. It's, it's one chapter. But I really want to read this because it is Edom. 
it, it, re it relates to Amos, but it's all whatever God wants me to be next. But anyways, we're going to pray, and let's pray and ask God for understanding. Um, when we read the word on our own, and to glorify himself in us, so we can be led by his spirit. So let's just pray. Dear Father God, come to your presence. Lord Jesus, we ask that you come into our lives each and every day, that you stay there, that we acknowledge you, that we keep you there. We thank you for the understanding of Amos chapter 6. If there's anything I said that didn't come from you, Lord Jesus, correct me upon it. If there's anything that I missed in this chapter, help me, help me know so I could do better the next time, Lord Jesus. I just ask that we thank you for the understanding that you have given us in this book, Lord Jesus. In the book of Amos chapter 6. Even though it was a continuation of 5, it was it was a lot, it was a good chapter to know. To know justice and reject the false justice. You, we must reject false justice. So we just ask that you forgive us for our sins. Because we sin every day. And we may know it, we may not know. But most of the time we do, even a lie is a sin and a bad thought. We just ask that we be more like you. That we ask for you. We depend on you more than we depend on those around us. It's okay to have help, but we can't rely on them. Because then we make them as an idol. If the only way we could get closer to you is through them. And that's not true. The, the way to get closer to you is a, our own relationship with you. So we could grow more spiritually. So we can have... Uh, open mind to to what you have or what revelations you have to reveal to us in the Bible when we read it to so we can apply it to our lives we ask that you give us understanding protect my family my friends those that's watching protect their families and their friends let them be led by the spirit same as me let us be in one mind and one spirit and today and all out Jesus so we thank you in the days to come in Jesus name I pray and the Father and the Son. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this Bible encouragement. See you guys in the next Bible encouragement. We're going to be continuing in Amos chapter 7. And then we're going to read Amos chapter 8 and 9. Then we do, we'll be done for the book of Amos. Praise God for that. And then after that, going to do a little get into God's word to see what he wants me to read together because it's not only for you guys it's for me as well because even though i may read the chapter before sometimes i may read the chapter before i bring the word but i still could gain understanding reading in the second time a third time with you guys but you know thank you guys for watching don't watch it because you want to hear me you got to watch it because you want to hear god you got to watch it because you want to know god not for me I don't want to become a, an idol or grape image to anybody because that will put, that God will put judgment on me and he will tell me, why are these people doing this to you? And I'm going to tell God, I have no idea. God, help me show them that to rely on you more. It's good. I like doing Bible encouragements, but just don't rely on me. Rely on God and allow him to help you so you could do things on YouTube or go out there with your family friends church to evangelize and to spread the good news because that's what we're called for we're not called for just to sit at home we're called for to go out there i may sit at home and do videos on youtube but i i i ha i get opportunities if i get an opportunity where the spirit says i want you to speak to that person whether it's at work a family member or down the street i will speak to that person i just got an opportunity recently at you know at my church, I got an opportunity to evangelize a little bit with the youth pastor there. He used to be the youth pastor. He's still a youth pastor, but he's not the youth pastor of the church anymore. But the youth pastor and his son and a fellow member in Christ, all, all fellow members, too. We had good experiences. We had some woe experiences, like, you know. But I tell you more, if you guys would like to know more, if you want me to do a video of my first experience being out there and spreading God's word, it was a good 45 to an hour, but it was a good opportunity and I thank God for that. I got to thank him because 
That's what we're called. We're called to spread Christ. Christ good news. Jesus Christ. So God bless you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this Bible encouragement. And see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day. And keep God in your mind. Same as me. Keep God in my mind today. And all day. God bless. Amen.